Hey guys and welcome back to Tech Force. So today we're going to be taking a look at another one of Snaptain's drones, the SP510. Now this foldable drone comes with built-in GPS for smooth and steady flights, as well as a rotatable 2.7K camera and return to home. So this is certainly an incredible drone with some fantastic features. Now if you guys are interested and want to find out some more, stay tuned. Now a few weeks ago I reviewed the Snaptain SP700 which only costs about $15 more than this drone and in my opinion it's actually the best drone under $200. So if you want to go and take a look at that video click on the card above. Okay so let's begin by taking a look at what comes inside the box. So inside the box we get the foldable drone itself, a single battery to power the drone, the controller which can be unfolded and folded quite compactly, some spare screws for the arms of the drone and also for the propellers, uh, two spare props, a micro USB charging cable to charge up the battery as well as the controller, uh, a small Phillips head screwdriver and then lastly the user manual. So we do get quite a lot inside the box which is great. And in terms of the box itself, it's actually nice and compact and magnetically opens and closes, which I think is awesome. And the drone and all the other items are cushioned in foam, so they're protected nicely. And this means you can easily put the box in your bag and take it wherever you want. And all the items are well protected inside. Okay, now aside from what comes inside the box, I'm sure you guys want to actually hear about the features and how the drone actually performs. So in my opinion, compared to the SP700, it doesn't feel as easy to control and doesn't feel as responsive, which does make me slightly uncomfortable when flying it high and far away. So I would definitely prefer to fly the SP700 as I know it's very responsive and I do feel more in control when operating it. But then again, it's still pretty cool and it is able to fly, fly quite high and quite far. Uh, the furthest distance I actually flew it was about 50 meters away, which is very good. But then the SP700 can actually be flown to over 100 meters away, which is so much more, and it only costs 20 or so dollars more. So the SP700 also gives you a lot more information on the controller, as it indicates the height as well as the distance from the pilot, which is way better than the SP7 5 to 10, which doesn't provide any stats at all on the controller. Now, the only main benefit of the SP510 over the SP700 is that it is foldable, uh, which makes it so much more portable. So, if Snaptain could produce a drone which had this level of portability, but then the intelligence and features of the SP700, that would be incredible. And if it was under $200 or even slightly more, it would be the best drone for its price. Now, one other minor benefit is that the camera angle can be remotely adjusted uh, for the SP510, which allows you to get some pretty cool shots of directly below as well as directly in front. Now, this is only a small thing, but if it was included on the SP700, that would have been pretty awesome, as you can get shots directly off the ground as you gain altitude, which looks amazing. Now the controller itself is actually pretty cool. Although it isn't able to provide much information to the pilot, its overall foldable design is pretty unique and allows it to be folded quite compactly. It's also quite different as it's able to be charged via micro USB with other controllers, whereas other controllers actually tend to use batteries. But then again, even though it does have a pretty cool foldable design, I would definitely prefer the SP700 controller as it's much more informative and easy to use because all the buttons are clearly labeled with their functions and the display is very simple to understand. Now in terms of the design of the drone itself, it's pretty sturdy and doesn't look too bad. However, again, when compared to the SP700, it doesn't look as attractive and it doesn't seem as powerful either, which are two factors that are essential in a good drone. In terms of the size, it isn't 
as big as the SP700, and the motors don't seem as powerful, but it does actually still manage to cook pretty well in slightly windy conditions, which I was surprised by. Uh, now, when each leg is unfolded, they do lock into place properly, which means that they won't close in flight or anything, or wiggle around in flight. Uh, this is obviously essential, as it could be fatal if the legs were to move out of position when the drone's flying at high altitudes. Now when it comes to all the features, this drone is packed full of them. We have the 2.7K camera, which is slightly higher resolution than the SP700, which only has a 2K camera. But then again, there isn't a massive difference between them, and they're both still very clear. With this drone, you can also activate waypoints, which means through the app, you can click on different locations and have your drone fly directly to them. Then we also have point of interest, which is where the drone is able to fly around a certain object to record footage of it. And then we also have follow me, where the drone would follow the remote. Uh, this is useful if you're going for a run or something and simply want the drone to tag along with you. But then again, you do have to hold the remote, which is pretty annoying, especially if you're going for a run. Next, we have return to home, which works pretty well. And although it doesn't land back on the exact spot, it does land in the rough area, uh, sort of one or two meters off the initial takeoff spot. Then we also have headless mode, which is fairly standard. And lastly, there are gestures for photo and video, which don't work perfectly every time, but does work sometimes and isn't too bad. Although I wouldn't really use it, I don't really see much point because you could just activate the button from the remote, which works just as well and is actually pretty, like a lot easier to do. Now through the app, you can also access several of these features as well as adjust other things, including the maximum height and distance the drone can fly. This process is known as creating a geofence, which is essentially an imaginary fence to prevent the drone from going into an area where you don't want it to go. And within the app, you can of course also view a live video feed, which is pretty cool. And your phone is also able to dock into a phone holder located on your controller which is a nice feature and does tend to be included with, with um, every drone these days, so it's nothing special really. Okay, so overall, the Snaptane SP510 is definitely a good drone to purchase, especially if you're looking for a beginner drone under $200 with advanced features. This drone would be a good stepping stone towards more advanced and more capable drones, such as the ones DJI have, have to offer. But then again, for only $20 more, I would certainly recommend the Snaptane SP700 as it's way, way better in my opinion and just feels so much more powerful and better to control. Now, if you're interested in purchasing either the SP700 or SP510, go click on the link in the description below and purchase whichever one you like. And whilst you're there, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and goodbye.